The year is 1999, and for the first time in 15 years, Star Wars is back. Fans are excited beyond belief for episode one. Millions of sick days are queued up to accommodate multiple viewings on opening day, but not everything goes according to plan. Fans hated The Phantom Menace, to the point where they harassed the actors day and night, made a documentary to spite George Lucas, and even created an organization dedicated to preserving what was thought of as pure Star Wars. Well, good news, there's more to the story. I'm Eric, welcome to Utini, and today we're gonna see how my generation saved the prequels. This week, The Living Force by John Jackson Miller was released, and as I was writing our review for the site, it got me thinking about the prequels. With this year being the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, we're seeing a huge resurgence in prequel media like books, comics, and even a re-release of The Phantom Menace coming in time for May the 4th. But how did we get here? Because to be clear, the prequels are popular. I mean, all you need to do is look at Star Wars Celebration, where the anniversary panels are positively packed and the actors are welcomed like heroes the second they step on stage. It's absolutely beautiful. And I truly believe that the so-called prequel kids, a group of which I am happy to be a part of, flipped the script on the prequels in the larger fan community with three specific tactics. Wonder, universe expansion, and empathy. With these three methods, us prequel kids have been able to take films that were once thought to be the end of Star Wars and turn them into some of the most beloved projects in the franchise. Let's start with The Wonder. And I wanna ask you a question. Do you remember seeing the prequels in a theater? Because I do, and it changed my life. I was seven years old when I sat in that theater to watch The Phantom Menace. And I don't know if I stopped smiling once. Because yes, I had grown up with Luke and Han and Leia and Vader, but, but this was different. The pure exhilaration of the pod race almost had me cheering, and the operatic destruction of Duel of Fates filled me with an exhilaration I had never known before. And that was just the beginning. Because this sense of awe and wonder continued at full strength when I turned 10 and saw Attack of the Clones. You know, I could have never imagined that this scene wouldn't have made everyone lose their minds. Now, this was Master Yoda, a character I knew, showing how powerful he was as he bolted across the screen. It was one of the biggest reveals of my early life. And when we walked out of that theater, that sense of wonder pervaded and demanded that we find other ways to experience this newfound obsession. And as always, Star Wars delivered on this front in spades. Of course, we're talking about toys. Now, our friends over on Legends Look Back recently did a show all about the best Phantom Menace toys that ever existed. And it's no wonder we were all so obsessed when we had these pieces of plastic filling up our houses. Because we weren't at home reminiscing about the frame composition or the dialogue construction. We were recreating the world. With our toys from KFC and Pizza Hut, with, with the play sets that never had enough pieces, and with our Jar Jar Binks beach towels. Yeah, no, I had that for many years many years. But of course, toys don't last forever. And as us prequel kids entered the digital age, we brought our favorite movies along with us in the form of, well, memes. Prequel memes dominated the internet for years. Almost every line of dialogue was used as a template for jokes and references. And as we grew into teens, we took moments that may have seemed cringy and created our own game that could be played as we were watching. And it had a rather unintended consequence. Because we had largely grown up without internet culture, our mental databanks of references weren't exactly full just yet, so these prequel memes stayed around for years, accidentally reinforcing our love for the movies long past our first viewings. After all, one of the best ways to define someone is by their sense of humor, right? And as prequel memes became almost sort of a shorthand for an entire generation, episodes 1, 2, and 3 became an integral part of who we were. And we also learned to open our minds and embrace things like silliness and camp right along epic action sequences. And by accepting the totality of what the prequels could offer us, the wonder of the films never had a chance to leave us. But it takes a little bit more than a sense of childlike wonder to change an entire franchise. And that's where the pivotal importance of universe expansion comes into play. And we embraced it in three major ways. Video games, books and comics, and TV shows. Now our generation may have been relatively new to the internet, but we absolutely knew our way around video games. And oh boy, did the prequels know how to treat us. With games like Star Wars Pod Racer, we were able to live in the worlds of the prequels day in and day out. And we learned the names of the racers, the names of the planets, and by feeling like we were actively exploring the galaxy, the universe began to feel like it belonged to us. Like, do you really think Plo Koon was my favorite Jedi because of his seat on the council? No, 
He was my favorite because his mask and lightsaber looked really cool in the Star Wars Obi-Wan dueling arena, which is where I met him and every single member of the Jedi Council while adults were complaining about why I shouldn't be having fun. Pretty sure I was having the better time. But of course, no game can be credited more for an entire generation's love of the prequels than the peak of it all. Star Wars Battlefront 2. The original Star Wars Battlefront 2. Some of my most vivid memories of the prequels are not crystal clear images of Naboo or Kamino. They're pixelized landscapes of Mustafar and Geonosis covered in explosions and clone troopers. Now, back in 2005, Battlefront 2 became almost a playable encyclopedia for young Star Wars fans as we played for hours learning about planet names, clone trooper designations, and Jedi. And thanks to the cinematic storyline the game presented, the stakes of the Clone Wars storyline was cemented even further without any help from the movies. Because we weren't just falling in love with a trilogy. We were falling in love with an entire era. But while some of us couldn't put the controller down, others of us were picking up books and comics which delved into this era even further. Now, personally, I was obsessed with the adventures of young Boba Fett. Seeing him on screen in episode two, I just had to know how that kid became the most fearsome bounty hunter in the galaxy years later. And here's the thing, I didn't instantly get mad and say it was impossible or that the character was ruined. I simply wanted to know the rest of the story. I was curious, mind of a child and all that. But perhaps nothing was more instrumental in redefining the entirety of the prequel trilogy than arguably the most impactful Star Wars TV show of all time. The Clone Wars is Star Wars, period. And for most of the prequel generation, this show is the reason that this era is so beloved, because it took the groundwork that George laid out with the trilogy and, and let it evolve to new heights we never could have imagined. In this show, we got to see the expansion of relationships that may have needed a bit more time to breathe, like Anakin and Obi-Wan and the romance of Anakin and Padme. We got to spend time with Jedi Council members on the battlefield, but most importantly, we got to meet new characters like Ahsoka Tano, Asajj Ventress, Captain Rex, and the rest of the clones, which taught an entire generation about the realities of war and the price that was paid by the entire Republic. Now, it's very easy to say that the Clone Wars fixed the prequels by showing what George really meant to create in the first place, but we never viewed it that way. They work hand in hand to create a story that shaped us as kids and continue to do so to this very day. And finally, we get to the most complex part of our journey, but possibly the most important, the empathy. As the last generation that grew up both on and offline, the prequel kids occupy an odd space. For a lot of us, we didn't even know that people didn't like the prequels during our childhood because it was easy to ignore. And we definitely didn't know how bad it got for the people involved until we couldn't look away. The hate that was leveled at the creators of the prequels was absolutely horrific. Jake Lloyd, a child, was bullied mercilessly. Hayden Christensen effectively left Hollywood for a decade, and Ahmed Best later admitted that he almost took his own life after the relentless harassment he got for playing Jar Jar. These attacks were submitted under the newly found blanket of online anonymity in the early 2000s, and once us prequel kids saw what was happening to our actual heroes, it really started to affect us. I remember the anger growing so strong that I began to question if I was wrong. I mean, if so many people who I'm supposed to trust have opinions like this, should I just give up my love for the prequels altogether? Like Star Wars was beginning to be seen as this fan base filled with toxicity and hatred, and so many of us were worried about being a part of that. So, we decided to change the narrative. Because we realized something very important. These were all people. They had lives, and they were doing a job that was supposed to make us happy. And it did make us happy. And no opinion or critique was worth the destruction of an actual person's self-worth or literal health. So we embraced them fully, and the results were beautiful. Every time prequel creators came up in public, we were there to cheer them on. We weren't just there for Anakin and Obi-Wan, we were there for Hayden and Ewan. We didn't just want to say hi to Jar Jar, we wanted to tell Ahmed Best we loved him. And this outpouring of love and acceptance from adults whose childhoods were formed by these people filled this community that had endured so many years of darkness with an unbelievable amount of light and life. Because that's what the prequels are to our generation. They are joy and love and fun and acceptance. They're who we are at our best and who we aspire to when we're at our worst. The prequels have been through the ringer over the last 25 years. And so has the Star Wars fandom as a whole. We've had the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But thanks to an entire generation's dedication to love and wonder, the prequels are back on the pedestal where they belong. But history can repeat itself if we're not careful. Some of the same hate that we saw with the prequels has made itself known during the sequel era. And some of those same kids who said never again when it came to Ahmed Best 
have done the same or worse to Kelly Marie Tran, Daisy Ridley, and John Boyega. So we have to be better. And that's my challenge for all of us. Remember how good it felt to bring the prequels out of the dark times and know that we can avoid that same fate again by focusing on what we love and never letting go of our sense of wonder and empathy. For now, I would love to know about your favorite prequel moments. Are you with me about Yoda's lightsaber and Attack of the Clones? Let us know in the comments down below or pop over to our Discord where you can feel free to celebrate your fandom all day, every day. Until next time, may the force be with you.